This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Altius Fortius Snowius 2! From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, we've been talking about Winter Quiz, the quadrennial international sporting event, and here's more of that. In 1956, Cortina de Ampezzo, Italy, was awarded the games after losing them in the war-canceled 1944 games. This was the first quiz primarily funded through corporate sponsorship as the Italian government refused to cover much of the cost outside of infrastructure. So Fiat was the official car, Olivetti supplied typewriters to the journalists. Again, weather was an issue. Snow had to be trucked in by the Italian army. The Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, who had been running their own event, the Workers' Quis, or Sparkitiads, decided to join the rest of the world at Quis that year and quickly became a powerhouse, taking over as the top award winner. This was the first Winter Quis with television coverage. It was done as an experiment, and no TV rights were actually sold. You could just show up and shoot it. Don't worry, that will come next. Eurovision broadcast the games across Western Europe, while Soviet TV broadcast their own spin on the events. During the opening ceremonies, Italian speed skater brought a torch into the stadium and tripped on a TV cable, but he was able to right himself and light the cauldron. Also, the Quis hymn was played for the first time. Italy only won medals in bobsleigh, winding up in eighth place. The USSR won the hockey tournament, surprising since they had only started competing internationally two years earlier. Tenley Albright won in women's figure skating despite a major injury two weeks earlier. She fell in practice and a skate cut through layers of clothing and her ankle. This was also the final time figure skating was held outdoors. Ski jumping saw a major change in technique. Competitors previously held their arms up while they were jumping. But Swiss skater Andres Dasher decided to hold his arms at his sides. He didn't win, but the whole sport changed to his position. 821 athletes from 32 countries competed in 24 events. There were no demonstration sports. 1960 brought the Winter Quiz back to the U.S. at Squaw Valley, California. The result there, the resort there had no facilities, so they were all built at a cost of $80 million. This was the first case of a dedicated athlete's village, the first use of a computer, IBM tabulated results, and the first time female speed skating and biathlon, replacing military patrol, was held. Walt Disney produced the opening and closing ceremonies. The U.S. threatened to deny visas to athletes from communist countries, but the IOC threatened to take the games away, so they relented. One thing Squaw Valley didn't build was a bobsled course, since only nine countries were going to send teams. So that event wasn't held. For the first time, TV rights were sold, in this case to CBS for all of $50,000, which resulted in 15 hours of coverage. Woo! In the men's slalom, there was a question if a competitor had missed a gate, so they asked CBS to supply tape for review. This would eventually become instant replay. Disney's opening ceremonies included 5,000 entertainers, the release of 2,000 pigeons, a military gun salute, and fireworks. The opening salvo in the bigger and better, well, at least bigger, opening ceremonies we see today. Ice hockey again saw controversy when the Canadians alleged that the Soviet Union's amateur players actually were given fake jobs in the military so they could practice full-time and get a huge advantage. Canada would continue to complain about this and would boycott the event down the line. The U.S. improbably won, after which the USSR would win until the 1980 Miracle on Ice. We are getting there. As mentioned, biathlon joined Quiz at Squaw Valley. is cross-country skiing plus shooting. Carol Heiss won in women's figure skating. She would go on to co-star in Snow White and the Three Stooges. <laughs> the Soviet Union won the most medals. 665 athletes from 30 countries competed in 27 events. Again, no demonstration sports. We move back to Europe and Innsbruck, Austria for the 1964 Winter Quiz. It was marked by previous tragedies. Australian skier Ross Milne and British luge slider Kimiers K. Zmirinsky 
both died in training shortly before the games. The entire U.S. figure skating team, including family members, coaches, and the officials, were killed in a plane crash in 1961 on the way to the World Championships, which were then canceled due to the tragedy. The U.S. team had to rebuild from scratch, which took many years. As was becoming a pattern, Innsbruck had a lack of snow, forcing 20,000 ice bricks and 40,000 cubic meters of snow to be transported by the Austrian army. Italian bobsleigh pilot Eugenio Monte loaned the British team an axle, allowing them to win the gold and Italy the bronze. Monte was honored as the first recipient of the Pierre de Coubertin Medal for Sportsmanship. As mentioned, Luge had its debut, smaller sled, running in your back, feet first. Again, the Soviet Union won the most medals. 1,091 athletes from 36 countries competed in 34 events, and ice stock returned as a demonstration sport. 1968's Winter Quiz stayed in Europe, this time in Grenoble, France. Color TV coverage happened for the first time with $2 million for the rights. Venues were spread out over the country and rumored to be done to provide better venues for TV. Two stars came out of the event. Jean-Claude Keeley won three golds in alpine skiing and went on to a lucrative commercial career. Peggy Fleming won gold in figure skating, the U.S.'s only gold, and went on to be a TV commentator in the sport for decades, as well as the star of the Ice Capades. The IOC began to order drug and gender testing of athletes for the first time after a number of controversies came to light. The torch relay included a swimmer who held the torch above the water. Austrian skier Karl Schantz stopped in the middle of a run, claiming a man in black crossed his path. He was allowed to restart and got a better time than Keeley, but an appeal disqualified him. The East German Luge team was disqualified for heating their runners. The bobsleigh events had to be scheduled early in the day as the cooling system couldn't keep up with a daytime run. ABC introduced Bugler's Dream as the official quiz anthem, and it's still used today. Norway won the most medals, the first time since 1956. 1,158 athletes from 37 countries competed in 35 events. Ice dancing, known at the time as rhythmic skating, was a demonstration sport. Winterquiz finally went to Asia in 1972 at Sapporo, Japan. Speaking of Japan, they won a gold medal for the first time in ski jumping, where they swept the competition. Alpine skiers were threatened with expulsion after they were involved with a ski camp and hence were considered professional. In the end, only Austrian Karl Schantz, the guy who saw the men in black last time, were stopped from competing as he made the most money. Canada began a period where they boycotted ice hockey due to concerns about Soviet players not being amateurs. The Soviet Union returned to the top spot in the medal count. 1,006 athletes from 35 countries competed in 35 events, and there were no demonstration sports. A return to Europe for the 1976 Winter Quiz at Innsbruck, Austria for the second time. Denver, Colorado was originally selected, but their state voted to reject funding it. Hmm. <laughs> in succession, Whistler, uh, British, Canada, British Columbia, Canada, then Salt Lake City were considered before the previous Austrian site was selected. This was the first winter quiz I remember watching on TV. Hmm. This was the games of Dorothy Hamill, she of the wedge haircut and endless commercials afterward. Franz Klammer won the men's downhill, which ABC covered with over a dozen cameras on the course. Skiing went high tech with sleek suits, helmets, and the end of wooden skis. Cross country skier Galina Kulakova was disqualified for using a nasal spray that included ephedrine, as do most of the over-the-counter sprays, the first stripped metal of Winter Quiz. Taiwan competed for the last time under the Republic of China flag. This was an ongoing issue. After this, they would compete as Chinese Taipei. Again, the Soviet Union won the most medals. 1,123 athletes from 37 countries competed in 37 events with no demonstration sports. I always thought it was a little unfair to say that the USSR won the most medals because it's really like, you know, 10 countries or whatever. Right, that was always the issue. 1980 Quiz saw another veteran city, Lake Placid, New York, get the games. The big story there, of course, was the miracle on ice. 
The U.S. beat the USSR in hockey using the youngest team in U.S. history. What people don't remember is this was the semi-final. They actually had to then beat Finland to win the gold, which they did. Al Michaels became a legendary commentator with, Do you believe in miracles? Yes! In 1999, this was named the top sports moment of the 20th century. Eric Haydn swept men's speed skating, including four quiz and one world record, delivering all but one of the U.S.'s gold medals for the, that quiz, the other being hockey, and it's still the most won by a single person in winter quiz. The men's 15-kilometer cross-country skating event, skiing event saw the closest win ever at .01 seconds. The People's Republic of China attended quiz for the first time. Artificial snow was used for the first time at Quise. Despite having held the event previously, Lake Placid had issues. Transportation snafus left spectators out in the cold for hours. Many tickets were left unsold. You can actually still buy them as souvenirs in the area. Yet again, the Soviet Union topped the medal count. 1,072 athletes from 37 countries competed in 38 events with no demonstration sports. The 1984 Quise was held in Sarajevo in the former Yugoslavia, currently the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. By the 90s, the Quiz venues would be the site of intense fighting during the Bosnian War. This was the first Quiz under the legendary IOC president Juan Antonio Samaranch. This is the greatest Olympics in all of time. The Quiz flag was mistakenly rated, raised upside down during the opening ceremonies. In ice dancing, Torval and Dean won a perfect artistic score, something that has yet to be repeated. Katarina Witt won the first of two golds in figure skating. East Germany won the most gold medals, but the Soviet Union eked out a win in total medals. 1,272 athletes from 49 countries competed in 39 events. The huge jump in the number of countries was due to a new quiz program where the IOC would cover the costs of one male and female athlete from each nation. This is why the March of Nations is so long today. Disabled alpine skiing was added as a demonstration sport. I can't believe we're still talking about the winter quiz games, Mark. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this might be too much. Yeah, so I guess we may actually do a third part. Yikes. And in the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Oh, it's the agony of defeat. Mm -hmm.